Oh, what's that, Richie? Ah, there's something very heavy, I believe. Another new surprise? Oh, they don't even ask for a signature, it just drops it and leaves. No, they make a picture. Maybe if I go inside, they need to make a picture. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a heavy sucker. Five kilowatt hour battery. Hey, Richie, do you want have daddy to open it? Yeah! So during our recent trip back to Canada, just before our haul out, we started receiving some new equipment from several of the manufacturers that I've been dealing with for the past few years, including this one from Bluetti, which is a brand new, fully modular and expandable off-grid energy system that's designed for use in sailboats, motorboats, RVs, vans, off-grid cabins or cottages, anything you want. And supposedly, it's plug and play so that anybody can install it. And that's what we're going to find out today. Okay, this is part of our new modular system from the Blue Eddy that has not actually been released yet as of the time of receiving this because they're looking to me for one of their pre-release videos. So it's going to be very cool to see how this whole system works together. It is meant to be modular but single cable installs. Very simple for anyone, even a beginner, to just hook it up and get it working. They say, I believe, within 30 minutes. Yeah, cool. Everything... And this is supposed to be a 5,000 watt inverter. Very, very powerful wow. system. Wow! Okay. It's so elegant. The Blue Eddy RV5. So this is the 5,000 watt inverter with all the charge controllers for solar, alternator, regulators, everything all built in. So we're not going to do a full review of this today because we still don't have two pieces of the system. They still have an e-panel and an e-pad, which is the control part of the system and the power distribution network. But what we do have is the battery and the inverter, which also powers both of those systems. And I just want to check them out and make sure everything's working. So I want to open them up, have a look at it, because they say that these systems are going to be very easy to connect and put together in a very short amount of time, all of their cables are already prefabricated, ready to hook up. So I want to have a look at our connections. Okay, so we got our negative terminal, our positive terminal, and it looks like here, yep, these are Ethernet ports, so these are for connecting the batteries together and connecting to the RV5 control center as well. And there's just two screws to open up this panel, and it should just lift off there we go okay and yes so here's our solar panels in for pv1 and pv2 we've got our various ethernet connections right here this is the dc out so that's what's going to go to the um, distribution network when we get the e-panel and this piece i believe yeah just lifts right out so these two terminals are going to connect to these two terminals right here then we have our AC grid. So this is AC power coming in. Now we're not gonna be able to hook that up. It's meant to be hooked into your panel at the house or something like that. But I think what I'm gonna do is just take like a, yeah. Oops, I'm just gonna take like a house extension cord that's it's rated for 15 amps. And I'm gonna cut this and use this just to actually plug it into the grid so that I can test the battery charger in it and make sure that it works. So we'll save that. But normally you've got your AC out, and again, that's gonna to go to that distribution system, but we don't have that yet. So 
We're just gonna work with what we got, do a quick couple of tests. I'd like to hook up the solar panels, make sure everything is working, and then we'll wait on the next pieces to arrive and then I'll finish my review at that time. So these are the boxes of all the power cables they sent. So I wanna see what we got here. All right, that's the fine cables. And I believe this, yeah, this is our main battery cables right here. Okay, so we got these battery cables to connect the battery to the RV5. And then these cables are what we use in the future to connect the RV5 to the distribution panel, the E-panel. So we got all that. We'll just get these ones hooked up for now. These ones we won't be using for the moment. And then I've got a set of extension cables, the MC4 connectors for the solar panel. So we can actually put them and fold them out on the lawn and plug them in and just make sure everything's charging and working the way it's supposed to. So we'll start with these cables here. Now we need this one and this one because they have the crimped connectors that are going to screw directly in to the battery terminals right here. So we just need to verify our positive and negative. We'll put those in. And it looks like Allen keys. So we'll need a set of Allen keys and we'll be ready to go. Okay, so I've just loosened off the Allen key nuts there and the restrainer. And what are we looking at? Battery positive, battery negative. I always want to make sure of that because it may not be protected against reverse polarity. The last thing we want to do is blow it up straight out of the box. So we're not going to be using a lot of power right now, but when this is in full install, you definitely want to have these very, very tight. The tighter the connection, the better the connectivity. So we'll hook up both of the cables to the RV5 first. And then we'll hook up the connectors to the battery. Now they have included a stop switch and everything, but they say that's not necessary for the battery connection because this is all switched and regulated internally. So it's all electronic. There's relays, solenoids or something inside. So this is just for the output between here and the E-panel. So we're gonna keep that for that, but that'll go on to the other set of wires, not this set of wires. So this set just gets connected directly. And we need positive to positive. So this one's gonna come over here. Make sure our connections are good and solid. And we have power. Okay, so we got a battery switch right here. We're just gonna press and hold. That light's green. And what do we got? Now we check here. 52.33. Okay, so we're ready to go. We should be able to just turn it on right here. So what I think we'll do is we'll hook up the solar panels. We got good sun outside right now. We'll see if that starts to activate the charging and hopefully bring us back up a couple of percent. And then after that, I'll just plug in this cable. I'll get that connected as well and leave it to charge overnight so that it tops it up. And we'll figure out which end we need to plug into the solar panel so they remain color coded. And then again, these are just gonna plug directly in here, screwed down with uh, set screws. So we're just gonna cut one of the connectors off so I can just hardwire it straight in. And that will give us a good connection for our test. All right, so we're gonna test the solar panels one at a time. And we're gonna hook up our extensions. So we got our positive cable is gonna connect this here. And our negative is going to connect here. We're just going to trim them off because we don't need connectors at the other end. It'd be nice if we had some reverse or reciprocal ends on the unit, just in pigtails, but we don't. So I'm just gonna take these off and plug them in directly. Okay, so I've already got the positive stripped and attached, got the negative stripped, and I'm just putting that into PV1 negative. Tighten down the clamp. Good and secure. Okay, now I believe we are ready. We can open up the panel, we'll put it out in the sun and we get some light on it. We should have some voltage appear here and then it should just start charging. Slowly but surely, at least we can test it. We'll open up the first panel. And I believe they have a kickstand built in. So we can get them angled better towards the sun.
24 volts. Okay. Power it back up. Okay, we had a bit of a hiccup here because I forgot we needed to have a data cable hooked up. So we had to find an ethernet cable and connect it to the pack output here and the battery down there so that the battery can communicate with the RV5 because it needs to know what it's doing, what's the battery status and everything like that. And then we loaded the app and connected them. So once we connected them, we can now go into the battery. <laughs> so once we connected them, we got them into the app now. I can go into the RV5. We're gonna connection it with Bluetooth. RV5 comes up, shows we're actually at 23% battery because now we've activated the system and it's functioning. And we are charging with PV solar at 160 watts right there. We can control all of our functions from here, all of our energy statistics. It's going to track all of that for us. And we can go down to the display now here as well. On the display, you can see we push and it comes on, shows us 23%. And input is 160 watts with the solar panel and con current configuration. And you can see the, the chart there showing us that it's charging. No output because we haven't hooked up any devices to it yet. But the solar panel, even late afternoon, in partial cloud is putting out 160 watts. And I've got it a bit too upright. It's adjustable straps on the back here so we can actually change the angle of the solar panel but we can mess around with all that again later. For now I think what I might do is put the two solar panels in series and connect that to the system and see what we get. Okay so you can see I've got both panels hooked up in series now. Both of them facing the sun. We just put all the connectors in series, hooked up to the same set of cables back to the RV5. And we are now getting 320 watts. So that's perfect, 160 watts each. And right now it's about 3, 3.30 in the afternoon. So the sun is already, as you can see by the shadows, very indirect, but we're still getting very good returns on our sun. Very nice. I'd call that a good first test. So a couple more things I just want to do quick before we finish for this is I attached an AC inlet cable. So as you can see, we've got this extension cord just plugged in here. I can plug this into the wall. I've already got the uh, input regulated to 10 amps. So the most it's going to pull is about 1200 watts, which is fine for that much wire. And I use the other end of the wire as the outlet side here. So we've got a pigtail. So we can just plug in some accessories for testing and make sure that we're getting good power there. To test the outputs, okay, we've got still 302 watts coming in from the solar panels. The battery's at 24% now, so it is charging. I'm gonna test the DC side first. So we're gonna set our multimeter to DC and positive and negative. You can see we're just getting variable millivolts right now, but I'll switch on DC. And immediately goes to 13.5, which is a regulated output DC voltage. So this is if you want to use it in a mobile application, like an RV, a boat, anything like that, you've got the exact voltage you need for charging the boat or running the accessories, of course. So I'll switch that off. We'll go down to the AC side. This is the AC output here that are live in our neutral and switch to AC. Okay, so we've got zero, we turn on the AC. And there we go, we're immediately at 120.1 volts at 59.9 Hertz, so 60 Hertz. That's perfect, that's exactly where we want it to be. And this is giving us a full sine wave output. So this is exactly what you need for your sensitive electronics, no matter what you're running, even the most sensitive of computers, TV screens, anything like that. So now we'll just plug this in and make sure that it charges. So I think we'll disconnect the solar panels now, bring it back inside, plug it in and charge it up a little bit and go from there. So the last thing I wanna check is just our AC inputs and outputs, do a load test quickly and just make sure that the charger works also. So I've got our pigtails connected. I've got this one ready to plug into a wall receptacle right there. So we'll test that for charging. First, I'm gonna test the AC output. So I've got this one connected as I showed you. 
and we brought out a little heater that's a 1500 watt portable heater that we're just going to put plugged in here and do a test. So we'll turn on the AC. And as you can see, we get our 120 watts even through the pigtail now. And then we'll bring up our heater. You can see we got a power light there. Turn on the fan. And you can see on the gauge here, we're drawing 32 watts on the fan. So now I'll switch it over to low heat. 760 watts. Go to high heat. And there we go, just under 1500 watts, and it's a rated 1500 watt fan, space heater. And that's getting very hot, of course. So now we can take this and we'll plug this in, and this should switch it over to house current. Okay, you can hear a click there. And now we've got 1,070 watts coming in from house and 1,360 going out to the heater. So I'll turn off the heater. And that should decrease our loads to zero watts, as you see there. And we're still pumping 1,170 watts in on charge. So everything is working exactly perfectly, just what we wanted to see. So, all right, I'm gonna let that run to charge up and we'll come back to this project another day.